Welcome to our lecture on igneous rocks. So we're moving away from minerals now and we're going to start talking about rocks themselves and the different kinds and how they form. So first, what is the difference between a mineral and a rock? Why do we even make this distinction? Well, minerals are chemically pure. They're made of only one substance, one compound, one element but rocks are aggregates or mixtures of different minerals. So they can have many different compounds or substances mixed together. So rocks are also classified by how they're made and what minerals that are found inside that rock. The minerals, remember, we classified by those properties like fracture and color and luster. Rocks can be inorganic and organic. So they can come from living things like petrified, um, petrified trees and stuff like that, but minerals are only inorganic. They can never have been a living thing or made by a living thing. Now, rocks can have fossils in them as well. We didn't talk about this with minerals, but we'll talk about this when we uh, get to sedimentary rocks. And rocks also make up the whole crust of the earth. That's predominantly what our crust is made of. So examples of rocks are things like limestone, basalt, marble, granite, pumice, all of that. Coal is a really good example here of uh, something being a rock but not a mineral. So coal is organic it, it's made from living things so it's a rock it can't be a mineral because of the fact that it came from something that was once living now the three types of rocks there's igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks and we tell them apart by how they form this lecture from this point on is just going to focus on igneous rocks and we're going to have our own lectures for the other two. So why are rocks so important though? Why do we care to study this at all? Well, one, they can be used to make tools, which is pretty important because tools have allowed us to build our society and make our technology and to just improve ourselves overall. People rely on minerals and metals that are found inside of rocks. So you can actually break open some rocks and find minerals that we use for um, our economy, for trade, for um, their beauty, anything like that. Rocks can also help us study the history of the earth and how it formed. We can look at our geological history, we say. And some rocks, like coal that I spoke of in um, one of our previous slides, can be used as an energy source. All right, so what are these igneous rocks that we're studying today? Well, they form when lava or magma cools and crystallizes. So remember that um, magma is that molten rock, that melted rock. And when it comes out onto the Earth's surface, we call it lava, like from a volcano or something like that. So examples of igneous rocks are basalt, obsidian you may have heard of, granite, you may have it on your countertops at home, pumice, quartz, which is another very common countertop material, and feldspar. So we talk about these igneous rocks as being fine-grained or coarse-grained, and this has to do with how quickly the magma or the lava cools once it reaches the um, lower temperatures. So coarse-grained rocks, like you'll see here, these are ones that form when the lava cools very slowly. You can see all the different grains of different colored materials. You see the pockets of all the different substances. So an example of this would be like granite. Now a fine grained rock is where you can't see all these like grainy dots throughout, it, throughout the whole thing. The grains are so small, so fine that we can't see them. So they don't appear to be multicolored or spotted or anything like that. Um, these form when lava cools quickly. Now there's a a couple other uh, types of igneous rocks that we're going to talk about here, and it has to deal with how they're 
cooled. They don't fit into fine grain or coarse grain exactly though. So the first one, when lava cools extremely fast, like very, very quickly, it can form a rock that looks like glass, this one right here, and that's called obsidian. You've probably seen that before. It's the, it looks like a black glass. And sometimes what will happen is gas bubbles can get trapped inside the rocks as it cools, usually when it's cooling very quickly once again. And as a result, you get these little pockets where the bubbles used to be inside the rock. So an example of this would be pumice. A lot of these ones are formed when volcanoes erupt and these rocks get uh, thrown out of the volcano and sent through the air. So as they're cooling, they collect a lot of air bubbles inside. Now there's two main types of these igneous rocks and it's based on where they form, extrusive or intrusive. So think about the word intrusive. If somebody's being intrusive in your life, they're like trying to find out, you know, where did you go today? Where's this? Why did you do that? They're trying to get into your life and your personal space. Well, so that's exactly how I want you to think of this when we're talking about these rocks. Intrusive rocks form inside the Earth's crust and they form um, usually as coarse grained because it's cooling very slowly inside the Earth's crust. It's a little warmer there than it is on the surface next to the cool air. Extrusive rocks, the, um, the prefix ex means out or without. So these form on the surface of the Earth, not inside the Earth. And this is usually because of lava. And they cool quickly or very quickly, so they're often the fine-grained or the glassy types of rocks. So here's just a couple pictures that you could see of what types of rocks are coming from um, intrusive or extrusive and what are some examples of each of them. So you could see one of the more common ones here, granite, forms really deep as an intrusive rock because it has it's coarse-grained. It has those like spots and speckles in it. And that is all that I have for you guys today, okay? So uh, make sure you do your vocab and I will see you next class.